Howdy folks, it's Jonathan, your GM here for Demon Days, an actual play podcast with a focus on fiends and the friends who play them. Wanted to give you a little bit of an update going forward. Uh, we're going to continue our bi-weekly schedule for January and a little bit of the beginning of February, but then from there on we will resume our weekly schedule. And now for our shoutouts. I want to give a shout out to Kilowatt, who has done the character art for our campaign and has done an amazing job. You can find her work over at Kilowatt underscore art at Twitter and thebibliotaf.blog on Instagram. And I want to give a shout out to Arknight, the sponsors of our campaign from the very beginning, whose props, maps, and minis make our table a delight. You should really check them out. And now, let's get to it. Friends, fiends, what a pleasure it is for you to have me here today to tell you more about everyone's favorite horny heroes. Yes, I'll take that whole barrel of ale, thank you. Anyway, let's begin. Our terrific trio of Tiefling killed the fuck out of a horned devil and her minions, built a modern manservant, and found themselves in a multi-car conveyance to take them deeper into the mountain. Safe, right? Yeah, about that. Why don't we just jump right into more of these Demon Days? So, Flotsam walks up to the wall console in the engine uh, toward the far end of it and reaches out both of his arms, inserting them into two conveniently arm-shaped holes about torso height into this console. And as the console ingests the arms a bit, you can see a multitude of cables that tether his arms and to his torso that they're still holding onto the arm pieces and they pulse like veins, but more machine-like. It's like, dun, dun. Dun, dun. For everyone else in the train car, you hear a loud groan, and the cars start to shift a bit and pull forward, so the, you know, the engine pulls the first car. So there's a little bit of a jostle. Uh, not too bad that where you fall over, have to do any saves, but enough to be like, oh damn. And the train starts moving forward, slowly at first, but then it begins to pick up speed. And at first you think, okay, this is going to be like super fast, super crazy, we're going to be there in no time. It's not that fast. Is there like a little damsel moment where like Fetter falls into Yusuf's arms because of the... Oh, yeah. Aww. Yeah, no, they, they're they they're walking through the... They're doing rounds through the car and Fetter goes through the door first and the cart shifts and he falls back and Yusuf's like, got you, buddy. I catch him easily. <laughs> Fan art that. Yeah. I ship that. God damn it. Kilowatt, please be <laughs> gentle. Because <laughs> here's the thing. My dex is high enough that maybe it was on purpose. Who's to say? So when he really, really, when he fell back, he was saying, I love you. Get out of here. <laughs> Fetter loves no one but himself. We all know that. Right on. So the train car starts moving, and it gets to about five miles per hour, you gauge. Mm -hmm. So not fast. Not as fast as you might have expected a, a train of this size to go. And I want to I want to keep kind of poking periodically out the windows. Is it, you know, rock on each side? Is it hewn rock or is it open into anything or, you know, what's the sitch? For maybe about five minutes, it's mostly hewn rock pretty close by, almost like you're in a tube underground. And at a certain point, it opens up into just pure darkness, oh, almost as if you're now in a very hollow part of this mountain. You, it's dark to the west, to the east, up above, below. The track almost thins out to where it's just enough for the car. And it feels like you're not on anything. You're just in a car, a train car, in the middle of nothing, which is a bit surprising. You weren't expecting that as you look out and just everything opens up. But there is a lot of space above and a lot of space below as the train car continues to move. And apart from the jostle of the track, you can't really gauge a distance much anymore. Because... Mm -hmm. What you had before with rock, you could sense movement. You could time it out and get distance. Uh, you could do distance math, whatever those math people in the world do. But now it, that that context is gone. Yeah, I'm just going to light a smoke and, and just kind of keep, you know, at some point once we've done the um, done the walkabout, I'm just going to stick up next to Flotsam and keep my eye out, you know, the closest kind of window 
Flotsam, we're looking for um, if there's an option to head veer to the right or to head west. Will you let me know, please? Acknowledged. Do you have any um, previous knowledge of the track, of where it's gone? Are you, does your interface allow you that? I have not interfaced with this track or vehicle before. We are on a straight path. All right. Uh, uh, override previously non-vocal response uh, while you're operating the vehicle. Acknowledged. Thank you. Contract language. I love it. He's my new. F- he's my favorite person to talk to. Yusuf shakes his head. So clear, so crisp. I love it. You, you hear you hear him crisp like apple. There you go. I'm sad no one has commented on his new uh, attire. Yusuf saw it, did the math in his head, and just he shakes his head a lot. <laughs> looking, sh- yeah, he's looking sharp. He is. He's looking good. Uh, all right. Settle in, gang. Could be a minute. Straight line to wherever. How fast are we going? About uh, five miles per hour. I'm going to link up with Galahan. Like, I might start to lose you soon from the feel of the direction that we're going and the speed. Okay. The return response starts to feel a bit fainter, a bit more out of focus for you. Okay. And yeah, so the journey of this train is going to take a little while. Roughly about 1.3 days, about 32 hours. So you have a little bit of time in this space. Oh, shit. Well, hot damn. Um, settle in, gang. It's going to be a minute. Um, so these are all broken crates here, right? There there seems to be a place to relax in the second car. Yep. The middle car has the, the, just a lounge with four chairs and tables. So you could set up stuff there, do whatever you want. Uh, there's beds in the middle car for you know, resting. And then, yeah, the other, the outer cars have debris. And- okay. Yeah, I'm going to sit down in one of the chairs, put my feet up. Nah, it does. Uh, you get anything interesting off that dagger? I've got, like, it held by the handle, still wrapped in the cloth that he gave it to me. Okay. And so while they were roaming the train and my mouth was on fire, I was <laughs> investigating the dagger. Okay, so then roll Arcana for it. That is a 21. Nice. Uh, so what are you, what particularly are you looking to discern from it? Like prop, certain properties, elements to it? Yeah. Well, there are runes up the side too, right? Yeah. Yeah, I probably would have been like, as I'm studying it, writing the runes down in my journal and for later. And, okay. But yeah, kind of like what it's made of, an idea of what it could possibly do property wise. Got it. Okay. So you sense that it's just as at a most basic level that there is a, it's silvered. So there is an element of being able to uh, work against creatures or enemies that have a resistance to non-silvered things. So there's that. There's an energy to this that you can only describe as necrotic. Uh, It gives you a very deathy sort of vibe to it. Uh, There's an element of, it's almost a a similar feeling to the draw, the pull, the desire from your orb, but in a different way. It's more of death is on your mind. You feel compelled for it. You can tell that there's more to this blade than more than meets the eye and that it may take more something more like an identify spell to get a bead on it. But there's something almost alive to it, for lack of a better way to put it. And if you want to roll a history, the language on the inscription, the language on the blade, is familiar to you? I got a 20 on history. 20 on history. You recognize it as a a language from the Underdark. They are uh, illithid, Mm. and the text is a bit more, it's a bit older, and it's not in regular use. Huh. Okay. Um, I kind of set it down on the table in front of me, and as I'm, like, copying the runes into my book, I talk to Fetter without looking at him, and tell him the property is like it's made of silver or at least I think it is some type of silver so it'll be helpful for anything that doesn't like silver Mm -hmm. and it's got a touch of necrotic much like my wonderful bell spell Mm -hmm. so things that like necrotic probably don't use it on them okay it'll heal them uh anything that hates necrotic you know living it's perfectly good to go these runes they need a. I need to look into them a little bit more. I know. Yeah. They're of a. But the silver is helpful with the ghosties, yeah. Yes. 
Yes, absolutely. All right. Right on. Would you, do you want to hold on for, to it for a minute, or do you think you'll be able to discern it? Or Give me a minute or two so I can finish writing the, the symbols down, and then I can go from there, and you can tuck it away with the rest of your daggers. Right on. And so, yeah, I'm good. I'm going to hang out. Cool, cool. So you guys are doing that. Uh, Yusuf, anything going on with you in the, with this extra time now that you have? I'd probably be um, hanging out. I probably would have put my sword away at this point. Um, I'd probably be, be hanging at the front of the engine so I could see what was like what we were traveling through. If there's any are there windows in the cars at all? Uh, only in the two. Uh, well, there's. There's no windows. There's only the two doors on both uh, car number three and then car number one on either side of the uh, the lounge car. Uh, there's only the, that sliding door. So it's not going too fast to where you couldn't just open it and hold on and get a, a, a look-see. And then there's no roof over the engine. So you could get out there where uh, Flotsam is and be able to look around. Gotcha, yeah. I'd probably hang out there and then just see what, what type of... Uh spaces we're traveling through like if they're caverns or if it's all just one tunnel or whatever and i'd 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 like question him about the area see what he knows about it as well okay as you as you question him he does his best to search back and but a lot of times you'll hear uh no connection to prime and then end with modern sad because he's he, there's extra information that he's trying to pull in sort of like a fucking web page requests right and then he's not getting that but he's giving you information to kind of deduce that at a certain point, this is, we're gonna we're actually going downward. The train is actually going downward. He he's giving you those elements mm-hmm. since you can't really discern from the left or to the right or up above. Right. But eventually, like every now and then, though, the the route tunnels in again, yeah. and you see rock, and you're able to place it, and then it opens back out. So when if if I hear Flotsam muttering about no connection to Prime, mm-hmm. like one of those times that that cycle goes through, I got Flotsam acknowledged. What's protocol if you should connect to Prime? Protocol, location, negative, friendlies, null. Correct. Yes. You you do not mention that you are in the presence of the friendlies. Please acknowledge. Acknowledge. Thank you. Crisp. <laughs> you hear? <laughs> Crisp. You, you sense that there's there's... It's all very ones and zeros, but there's still an element that is trying to be human-like. Sure. It's the quirk of the modern, but yeah. <laughs> and Yusuf, if you get more information, that ma- it mainly just ends up being that, that you're going you're going downward now. You're heading further down into the ground. Is there anything else you're trying to discern from him? Are we in tunnels the whole time? Are we in caverns? Like, what's the what's the landscape look like, so to speak? It alternates between mm, tunnels for a couple hours at a time, and then it opens up into caverns, big caverns. There's a lot of open space above and below. Faintly, every now and then you get a, you can kind of see up above and see some rock as you get to a limit there if you squint a little bit, but then there's nothing down below. Why don't you use a do a quick history check? Uh, that's a no. I got a six. Yeah. So you don't get much from that. You do know at a very basic level that with this much open space that you've encountered, you probably got easy access to the Underdark <laughs> if you were to fall off the train. You might die on the way down, but you could get to all the vast wonders of underneath this this uh, planet from here. Right. A lot more open than any mountain you've ever encountered. Maybe it was manufactured, torn there by... Like, you, you, your mind wanders at the possibilities, none of it which might be true or some of it. Your thoughts run wild with that role. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I'll just uh, I'll just hang out and keep my eyes open. And just hearing from what they've talked about, like, I'm curious how big the hand is, like, what its what its mass looks like, and if I'll, if Yusuf will see it coming. Like, if we, like, say, like, if it's, like, in the middle of a cavern and we're, like, looping the cavern, I'm just, like, if we, if he gets a glimpse of it, that's kind of what he's got in the back of his head. Oh, got it, got it. Yeah, so far, you guys seem to be on the more upper end of things, so not much useful information just yet. Okay. But surprisingly, despite the up and down of it, this tra- track has been very straight, mm-hmm. very by the book. <laughs> Nothing too exciting. Yeah, I, I'll occasionally head up there with Yusuf and Flotsam as well and just, you know, peer around and then come back and sit. And Yeah. At a certain point, your internal clock suggests that it might be a bit later in the evening. Fetter, you 
I think your, your compass, right, has also does time. Yeah, it's a po- it's a it's a stopwatch. I mean, it's a pocket watch on one side and a compass on the other. It doesn't seem to be too magnetically affected. You know, there was a little bit of uh, distortion. Yeah, the other tower. Yeah, but it doesn't seem to be too bad right now. And you get a sense that you're on in the evening, so you're about at the getting to the end of eight dauber, end of the day, mm-hmm. which then leaves you guys to whoever's going to do watch and any evening activities before you jump to the morning and then whatever one activity, what big activity you guys want to do there, and then... Well, uh, believe it or not, it's about the end of the day. <sighs> Sit down, have some rations, drink a little bit more whiskey than I've been drinking all day, and maybe we should do some watches. I mean, just to cape, uh, I don't know, I spend a lot of time uh, in the dark, and it's helpful to keep a clock regulated, you know? Sure. Happy to go first, or whatever's clever. People... Bat up, bunk out as you need to, okay? I slept pretty hard last night, so I'm good for a, a watch or two if need be. Right on. Yeah, I, I, I feel like Fetter's just kind of like occasionally like you do on like a long plane ride, like nodding off, you know what I mean, periodically, <laughs> and then getting up and yeah. Cool. So then, yeah, you can go ahead and do your watch. Um, you notice that Sunday's in the, uh, the three cart. I'll put her up there for now and just doing exercises and keeping keeping busy just physically busy to keep the boredom at bay the fantasy equivalent of jumping jacks yeah. hanging on things climbing around yeah she's doing her thing Yusuf you got the first watch if you want to do a perception check sure and for this since you are inside you do have access to the roof of the train through each of the doors in the middle there gotcha he doesn't even think to look up there because I rolled a three. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, cool. And then your watch ends with seemingly no no issues. Unless I'm taking over somebody else's watch, yeah, I'll I'll take uh, I'll take the first watch and I'll go to bed. So, okay. Well, Taslin's hanging out with her books and stuff, and will occasionally like fall asleep like the bookworm in the study. Maybe some drool onto her journal. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> yeah. So then, Taslin, you're, you said you were, is that you taking the watch poorly, or is someone else jumping in after Yusuf? As if somebody else wants to jump in or wake her up, whichever. Sure, I'll go. All right, cool. Yeah, general perception check there, Fetter, and... Uh, do-do-do, that's a 22. Oh, yeah, you're pretty thorough. You pop up and, you know, holding on, you can see outside the roof and you don't see anything. The moving is nice, despite mm-hmm. being a little on the boring side. Cool. Yeah, I'll uh, tap out with Taz at some point. All right. I'll, uh, you know, just try to, like, wrap her in a little blanket and, like, shut her, you know, put, like, put a little thing in her book. You know what I mean? Just, and then, like, close it and, like. Aw. And then be like, hey, buddy, when it's her turn to time for watch. Uh, oh. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Real boring, this one. I, I can't wait for the dragon to come back from the dead and tear the train apart. <laughs> but so far, so good. And watch, it'll all go wrong. Yeah. If anyone's going to jinx it, it's going to be you. Absolutely. Have fun. <laughs> and then just like... All right, yeah, perception, Taslin? Uh, 21. 21, yeah, you check everywhere. Uneventful. And during your section of the watch, the train car is in more of a tunnel, so... Even still, if anything could get you, get to you, they'd have a real fuck of a time at it. They'd probably be a lot thinner by the time they got inside. And yeah, your watch ends. Oh boy. So is it Dell and Nine now, John? Yep, Dell and Nine. You are now in the morning. Friday, Friday. I guess, or Saturday. I don't know. <laughs> However, the week, whatever the last day of the week is. I do some scrying. Scrying. All right, let me get my dice out. Since it's a new day and a new dawn that we don't see. <laughs> All right, so let's see. It's morning. Okay. I assume you still do it for you still attempt to do it for both. Yep, because you never know. He could be on our plane of existence again. Right. So at first, it seems like nothing's going to hit in their vision, and you're like fucking dead. But the mist swirls away in the orb, and you see a tavern, fairly nondescript, fairly small, out of the way, obscure, and you see a figure robed in stars, chilling in a very back booth, nursing. Quite a few bruises and scars, but uh, otherwise enjoying a good ale. And got a bit of a dazed look. Like he's been, like he's been to some places, and it didn't quite turn out the way he, he expected. <laughs> I've seen some shit. 
plug, plug, plug. Yeah, there's very much a I've seen some shit look on his face, and yeah, his lip is cut, but it's like scarred over. He's got some gashes across the face, and the robe is intact, but he is not so much. And uh, yeah, a, a barmaid comes over, fills up the drink, and he makes winky eyes at her. Of course. And uh, let's see what, what happens here. <laughs> As he winks and does a smile, uh, one of his teeth falls out, and it's not very attractive. The barmaid just. <laughs> Walks away. <laughs> Swing and a miss. And I a little too loudly, I'm, a, I'm like, serves you right, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Yusuf wakes up. What? What'd I do? Nothing. Nothing. You're good. Go back to sleep. It's cool. Looks around. Uh, okay. Yeah. And so that vision ends. And then the clouds, the, the mist swirls again. And you see... Uh, a bit of morning frivolity between Little Thing and uh, Fee. Uh, weird this this early in the morning, but they have a very similar energy about them, and Fedor can attest to this, uh, that she's not a, a, sleep, a person to sleep in when there's jollies to be had of any kind. And they're, they're running around, and a lot of the staff of this palace look completely exasperated with the two of them just having their games. And it's a fairly uneventful vision. If you want to do a perception check just to see if there's anything weird you catch along the periphery of this. 19. Near the end of the vision, you happen to catch sight of that robe figure again, chatting with uh, mm. the bald guy in black, the milky eyes. Uh, it's just a quick vision, and it's only there because the two of them pass by. Very quick. Blink and you miss it, but you didn't blink, so you didn't miss it. And then the vision fades. Mm. Okay. So helpful. Uh, also, do another perception check, Taslin. Uh, 20. 20. After the vision was over and you just kind of get your bearings again, you notice that your hand was dancing along where you were storing that orb. You know, just kind of dancing around it, not going in or anything. You just were fidgeting with it, fidgeting nearby. This is like, huh, that's a weird thing to notice. Didn't realize I was doing that. Okay. I look at my hand like it's a traitor. <laughs> just lightly slap it be like, stop that. Mm. That is your vision, and that is that. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to, in the course of all of this, I haven't done this in a while, uh, get the old green journal out. Ooh. Yeah. And write in my in the in the my mother's specific cipher, not just the family cipher, but my mom's specific cipher to my mother. Sure. And I'll send this to you, John. Uh, training our eyes southward still towards Dragon's Death and Titan's Hill. Uh, how goes the trek through endless sands? Are you still held with helping hands? So this is what happens during scrying time as I just start writing fucking rhyming couplets. <laughs> <laughs> and while you're writing that out to Z, mm -hmm. you do get... Uh, a brief note from I, uh, just mm -hmm. confirming we'll try to figure out what I can about Fleg mm -hmm. and recent upset. What news with you? It's written kind of in a very drawn out way with a question mark. Mm -hmm. Sort of, you recognize this to be Igni's poor way of trying to be <laughs> trying to be subtle sure she's a pretty she's a pretty blunt instrument in general but but it's in the, it's in the general family cipher right yeah general fan, family cipher with a bit of an extra what do you call it leading that the, like she's drawled it out a little bit more mm -hmm. so even by cipher standards so, you know, like everyone else might just glaze over it be like what are you doing you drunk oh, oh it's yeah so it's a little bit she's not it's more like what's the tone of it can i tell like in the inferred tone of text now she's curious about how things are going yeah general concern but doesn't want to know where you are mm -hmm. necessarily she gets that way or she has been that way in the past just when she wants to know enough mm -hmm. know enough to not be too dangerous to you uh do 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 okay i'll i'll think i'll ponder a good response for that and i'll we'll get back to it but I'll just kind of sit there and look at the open journal and kind of like furrow brow and try to think of the right thing to say. Yeah, so you guys, that's this is about the morning where you're sitting about seven, eight-ish, uh, thereabouts. Mm -hmm. So you have about about 12 more hours before you get to your final destination. <laughs> no, you have about uh, 12 hours before you get to where you're going, or at least a, a leg of it. And uh, yeah, you have about time for a day's activity any research, any studying, any conversation before we just breeze past it. 
Okay, here's what I'm gonna say. Uh, investigating some prime opportunities down south, keeping one good eye on the client, but they're really dragging their feet. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I think that the inference, <laughs> you know, there's a subtle prime opportunities, you know. Yeah. One good eye and dragon, obviously, are subtly, very subtly emphasized in the cipher. So, yeah, that's it. Cool, cool. So then was there anything else you, uh, Tazlin, you wanted to discern about the knife for Fetter? Well, no, after I finished um, writing down the runes on that were on the blade, I would have given it back to him. Okay. At some point, Sonny's in the same room as you. She's watching you, sort of, just study and take care of things and just generally contemplate. But she does notice that your hand keeps dancing a little bit. And she speaks up finally, because it's been making her curious. Uh, are you, are you okay? Is something going on? You seem very interested in something. Oh, no, I'm not interested in anything in particular. My hand is just being a traitor. Nothing to worry yourself about. Okay, I, I generally worry. I, I recognize fidgets like that of curiosity, and I just wasn't sure, you know. Uh, if there's anything you wish to confide, uh, I'm, I'm here. I can, can be a, an ear, even if I don't have any good advice. Or even if I do, sometimes it's good to say things, get them in the air. And it's not like anyone's spying on this train car <laughs> from the outside. It's just um, an object we picked up trying to wiggle its way into my brain. That's all. Oh, uh, magical? Possibly. Does it uh, make you want to touch it or something? Or is it like brainwashing you? Well, things that make me want to touch them, that's a long list. But this... Um... <laughs> she realizes that she said like her phrasing like, oh, fuck. yeah. Didn't mean to be all pervy with it. I'm not entirely sure what it is yet, or its purpose. Um, is it trying to take control of you? Do, you? do you get a sense that it's malicious? No, no, no. No, no. It's not that smart. I, it's not sentient, anyway. Hmm. It's just... If I show it to you, it might, you know, infect others with its wonderful tingling into the brain, so... Okay, well... I'm curious enough to look at it. Uh, I won't touch it, though. I'll step... I'll... She sits on her hands. If, if touch is a component of uh, mind control or brainwashing, I'm fucking clear of that. And she smiles a little bit. It, mm, <laughs> okay, I don't know how to respond to that, and I just pull out the... <laughs> <laughs> I just pull... I pull it out of the, the bag of holding in its cloth and kind of, like, set it down on the table. Yeah, yeah. And, um... Pull the, the cloth away. Well, before I do that, I'll actually kind of flip through my journal. Rewind. Um, I'll flip through my journal and I'll show her a picture of it before I ever actually pull it out. Sure. And she eyes it. Oh, it looks uh, really weird. Like all like little holes in it. Like mm -hmm. it's like some sort of spiky ball or something that like gotcha. <laughs> it's not quite spiky, but it, it definitely does respond to touch in a nice way. She tilts her head a little bit. A nice way? Like, like, like pleasurable. Like, it, it, it you enjoy to, like, you enjoy being around it. Um, I wouldn't say I enjoy being around it, but it's not necessarily a you touch it and bad things happen, but it's also not you touch it and, you know, the stars open. Hmm. But if you touch it, it responds equally. Huh. Like, I don't want you to hurt yourself, but if you put, like, if you bring it out, is there a safe way to examine it so you don't hurt yourself? Well, sure. I've touched it over the cloth that it's wrapped in plenty of times. It's never made skin-on-skin -skin contact, but that hasn't changed this guy and I just like hold up my hand that's been like circling the bag and I'm like doesn't change this guy yeah I reckon that's going to be a concern you might keep that in mind that if a <laughs> traitor has hands right but uh, things like they have a way of just happening you know I don't deal with too many magic orbs or trinkets or things like that but uh, 
things have weird properties to them and unexplainable things and prepare for the eventuality that you might actually touch it at some point or there might be some more there might be the next step in whatever this is and have backup plan in mind I wish if I had some sort of spell I could do something with it I could maybe help but I don't I I'm hoping you know over time I can learn some more helpful spells to figure things out like look at trinkets and stuff but can't do much that much with that for now but yeah I recommend being cautious especially if it if there's a pleasure element to it because that can be very tempting and this train ride is super boring <laughs> nothing wrong with a little pleasure <laughs> I just kind of lean forward with my my hand, like my chin on my hand going, are you tempted by pleasure? <laughs> oh, uh, who isn't? You know, it, you, you're, you're a druid living out in the woods by yourself for a, for a long time. You, you get imaginative. <laughs> she smirks. And what gets your pleasure? Well, definitely not some weird spiky orb, that's for sure. Uh... Boring. <laughs> <laughs> but if you wanted to be pricked, we could have that happen. Not it. She <laughs> she tilts her head. <laughs> I wouldn't say blood play is off the table necessarily, or a little bit of you know, a little bit of damage. Uh, but uh, mm, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> My eyebrow kind of quirks. I was gonna say, g- given 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 some of your. Uh, Recent proclivities. That might not be the best, but whatever. Uh, sane, safe, and consensual. The three S's. Exactly. Wait. I never mind. <laughs> <laughs> and she she looks you dead in the eye. Like, are you suggesting anything that might pass the time, or is this just uh, banter? I mean, I just like to know what makes people tick. What makes you tick, Sonny? What gets your juices revving? Oh, goodness. <laughs> you sense there's a little bit of blushing along the, the green of the face. Well, you know, there isn't a... Uh, let's just say being around you devil types has been a very fascinating situation for my feelings. Those horns, the tail, a bit of that warm skin. Hmm. There's a draw. There's a draw to you guys. I suppose there's a certain flair to different, yeah. Yeah, there's a draw to you guys that I'm not gonna lie. If any one of you had just said, you know, hey, that back car is empty, I'd been like, hey, you know what, what the hell? Mmm, so no one particular person draws your attention. Well, if you want to do an insight check on her, she's... Oh yeah, I could rock (laughs) that insight. This is what I was made for. (laughs) This is the shit I used to do in uh, <laughs> in the city. Let's see. I got a 20. 20. All right, let's see if, if she's got any. Well, I mean, you know, the the kind of the, those. <laughs> she's struggling. She's, she's getting flustered. Not necessarily flat-footed so much as she bends her arm in a very hoofed way, like that sort of leg kicking. I, like, lean in even a little bit more. Oh, really? I want to be in a chair behind (laughs) Sunny, and I just want to just be rolling my eyes trying to get Taslin to crack while this whole scene's going on. Like, just just very stealthily, just... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> at a certain point, it's almost too much. The stumbling becomes so much. Like, you know, at a certain point, you're, like, mal- you're like hanging yourself. <laughs> yeah. Kind of oh, yourself. yeah. Like, I'm totally just making faces and just doing very crude hand gestures behind. <laughs> and, uh, Yusuf, maybe it's at about this time that you happen to just be walking, pacing back and forth, going to a different car or whatever, and she shuts up. The minute you walk into yeah. the car and then just like... <laughs> right when he gets level with her, I'm going to like kick her under the table. <laughs> and she's like, oh, ow, fuck. And just like kind of falls into Yusuf along his side. Like, oh, God. Uh, what? What? Catch. Oh, oh, thank you. You all right? Uh, yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> what happened? Uh, we hit a bump. Really? We did? Seems pretty smooth. Ah, I could have, I could have, I could have, I could have. Real, uh, real, real bumpy back here, Yusuf. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> She's just looking 
sort of like she's eyeing him from her periphery, but she's looking off into a corner. Like hmm, that's a very fascinating corner of the ceiling. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. So you know. I, 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 um, yeah. Hey, so Yusuf, uh, why don't you let Sunny join you on your little um, <laughs> circuit <laughs> around the train? Maybe take her into a back car and talk about your gods? And I just give her like a wink. Kind of look back and forth. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're mean. We're gonna break <laughs> her little dumb heart. I kind of look back and forth. I'm like, what is going on? I don't know. Maybe Flotsam has a setting or something. <laughs> oh, God. Maybe, oh, you know what? The the back car might not be very secure, she says really quickly. I think I'm going to run and hide there for a while. <laughs> oh, we're such assholes. We're such total assholes. But she, oh, fuck. She uh, gets up, trips on her foot, and, like, falls into Yusuf again. Like, oh, God. Oh, oh fuck. And then she, like, scrambles to the, the door and the doorway and, like, gets into the other car car number three to just melt from all the steam and heat what is wrong with you two i mean i know i'm not a good person but i still i still I kind of feel... lean back in the chair and i'm like oh man such a shame such a shame yeah yeah passion passion <laughs> missed opportunity Mm-mm. ah man Yusuf, you could have had so much fun. You can still go and have fun. You need some fun in your life. Look, I've got a pretty broad spectrum, but yeah, I think I'm good for the moment. But go ahead. Go ahead, champ. Go get him. <laughs> just pat on his little furry butt. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You guys you guys can talk about, like, trees and grass. Yusuf slowly walks out the door and closes it behind her. I guarantee you she can <laughs> cash Shillelagh on that stick of hers. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> oh, God. He goes back up to the front to check Nightmare. the view. Maybe regrow some flowers in places as he has the door shut. <laughs> Get some moonbeam. Nature Druids f- can do a moonbeam, too. And nature finds a way, Yusuf. Nature finds a way. <laughs> All of a sudden, velociraptors attack the train. <laughs> <laughs> As the doors close, I kind of look at Fetter and I'm like, I think nature would find a way with us right now. Flotsam. <laughs> Disregard <laughs> auditory receptors for the next 15 minutes. You, so if you, you're, you're standing next to him, so you hear it too. Acknowledged. And just like two high school seniors in the back of the band bus on the way to Orlando. Uh, we'll figure out... <laughs> we'll figure out... Uh, yeah. Just like a like a, a blanket pulled way too tight, trying to cover a whole bunch of room. <clears throat> it's like acrobatics, right? Yeah. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Look, and I, and I just want to get out ahead. That is not at all autobiographical. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Awkwardness slowly, for two people in the in the party subsides, and at around about that time, you start to notice the train slowing a little bit, a little early to be at the end. And Yusuf, you're there too, and you notice that Flotsam is ticking a little bit, like trying to discern something. Obstruction, let friendly know. And it dr- addresses you, Fe- uh, Yusuf, still under auditory closure. I kind of nod my head and uh, walk back through the door, wondering what I'm going to find. (laughs) Oh, we're just sitting uh, next to each other like uh, two choir kids in church. Just like Mm -hmm. hands Uh completely visible. Like nothing, nothing going on here. Slide the slide the door open with my eyes closed. I'm like, so uh, what am I doing? He opens his eyes. It's like, so um, I don't know if you can feel it because you probably have other things going on right now, but we're starting to slow down. There's some type of obstru- obstruction on the path. And I close the door and walk back up front. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll have a... Uh, pardon me, madam. I'm going to go see what's going on. And uh, I'll head up to the front car and try to put a good eye for detail in front of the tracks and see what I can see. Yeah. And uh, 
uh, Flotsam looks relieved that you're there. And he, ex- he explains... Obstruction approaching? And you look ahead and with your perception, I would say still do a... a che- the old check? I'll roll it. I'll roll some dice. I'll play some Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, sweet. Dungeons and Dragons. And it's a 16 on the die. So that becomes a 25. 25? Ah, even better. Yeah, you notice it. It's uh, not... There's a, a bit of rock and debris on the track. And it's not a very thick track, or wide track. But it's enough to, that would cause some jostling of the train and he's slowing to adjust to it uh, but he's also unsure if uh, and he expresses this to you too as you look and see the debris ahead. Maybe about a minute to two minutes away. Do we do we uh, overtake it? Do we pass through it? Or do we slow down further? Slow down, Flotsam. Let's slow, slow it on down. Let's uh, just ease on up to it. We'll take a look. Please. Acknowledged, And he does. He slows it down quite a bit. I would say at a certain point, you barely start to feel movement. So it's it, you feel good enough to where you could even climb out onto the engine and even just look ahead. And without any rolls or anything, you could get enough of a... Yeah, I think if, you know, I'll try to avoid any hot parts. I'm not sure what exactly is motivating this thing, but, you know, and I'll just kind of hop up on and just kind of slink my way down the, uh, the length of the engine. Yeah. And as you do so, you see that it, it's, it takes about a minute or two to get there and it starts to go over it slowly and you were right to slow down it jostles the track a little bit it's a l- awkward enough to where if you'd been going the full speed there might have been some checks involved and so it pushes it aside crushes some of the rock goes over it and uh fetter after you after you hear it go over the engine like the engine drives over it, you feel the bump bump, uh-huh. bump and then the car and then the second car goes over the same rubble. But in that second car rumble, you hear a, a fink, a weird sound. Uh-huh. It rumbles again, and, you hear, and then you hear another fink. And weirdly enough, you, your perception, you see this like faint thing just kind of flinging it, like moving fast up ahead, like up above. And almost arcing. Right, like we're like like some sort of missile is being hurled at us, John. Is that what I'm? Yeah, you might say that some sort of not maybe not necessarily a missile, but something is in an arc trajectory coming your way. Okay, and you have about maybe like some like something's doing a pass on the train and coming back. That something may have accounted for a slowdown and is trying to get to the train. So something has swoop either yes. left. Would, would you call it a <laughs> swoop, John? <laughs> I would call it more of a leap. A leap. Fantastic. So a leap, John B. <laughs> oh boy. I'll look I'll I'll look back in my best, like almost too cliched uh Han Solo and just be like, I think we got company. And yeah, almost on cue. Mm-hmm. You hear the thump thump on the roof as first phoom, the spider lands on top. Weird looking spider, and you can kind of see the first one from where you're standing because it, and it comes out. over my head right like I yeah see it. and lands on the uh, first the roof of the first car uh-huh. so you've heard two so far you've heard the one fink fink and then there's a third one you, you see another one get close and land you don't see where it lands necessarily right for sake of this there's that and then at this point i would say let's roll initiative fantastic uh hell big weird spider monsters on the roof uh but da that's not bad. 17. Fantastic. 10. Oh, I'm really loving that 21 number. What's Flotsam doing? Fuck, man. I'm gonna, you know, this this dice, this dice right here, this red dice, this infernal dice, I'm retiring it. It's gotta retire. It's gotta go. It's gotta, it's, it's grounded. <laughs> not just jail. You're done. We're melting you down for scrap. Yeah, because... Oh, okay. So at least like Babadoody. At least Sonny has tied the uh, fucking Modron. All right. So the round starts with Taslin. Well, I think the only thing that I can do is I'm going to move through the carts um, to the not all the way where they are, but like the cart. So. Okay. All right. Fetter, you're next. Okay, I'm going to go, uh, <clears throat> Flotsam, let's, uh, return to normal traveling speed, please. Acknowledged. And then I'm going to hop up 
I'm gonna hop up onto the roof and hold my attack. Actually, uh, yeah, I'll hold my attack action and do my insightful uh, insightful fighting on the one I can see, the closest one. Okay. And that is a 17 versus their deception on the on the on just this the the one on uh, the number one car that's looking at me. Okay. They rolled a three. Cool. So. There's your squishy bits. And I'll just, uh, I'll have a dagger out and I'm just kind of waiting for him to come to me. First of all, what you see on the roof is just immediately on this first car is this weirdly shaped spider that, not like any spider you've seen before, a bit more bulbous and a bit more awkwardly shaped and a bit more erratic. But on it sits one of those guys you fought back in Dwarendelf, back in the housing area, those Duragar. Oh, yeah. One of them is sitting on the ste- on the spider like it's a cavalry steed. Oh, no. And kind of back, holding on for dear life, is a much bigger Duragar who... Seems a little bit more important than the rest. And then there are two closer to you, to where you're standing on the south end of this first train car. Right. And the one you discerned was maybe 15 feet away. And in his hand, you see that there is a a blade, but it's made of, like, shimmering air. The air around it shimmers. And it's not like any blade you've seen before. Mm Mm-hmm. And it seems to be not using normal weaponry. Yes, sir. If you ever seen a dwarf ride a spider, I'm not saying that euphemistically. (laughs) No. And then the one further back between the spider and the Duragar closest to you charges at you, runs in your direction, and... Does that trigger my held attack? Yeah. Okay. So it starts charging you. Uh, that is with the dragon tooth dagger, uh, dirty 20. Okay, that hits. Okay. Get silly with this. It's a um, 10, 20... For 29 points of regular damage and five points of poison damage on top. Not bad. It takes quite the beating. And I just, so I'm just going to like strike out with it real quick and be like, easy there, fella. Last chance to talk this out. Yeah. And that attack does a lot of damage. It gets in rough shape. And uh, yeah, but still there's a, you see, you see as it's close to you, there's a resolve, a steely resolve in its, in its eye that uh, it seems like it's not going to care what you do to it. You're going to have to kill it. Okay. And then you can see from where you are that the spider from the far back runs off the edge and clings to the side and doesn't get very far. He doesn't have a, that much movement. What is the train track doing right now? Is it an open cavern? Is it, is there walls near, or, you know, like what's the, what paint me a landscape picture of how this, where this train's going right now. Right now it's all, it's open. When you were out there checking for the debris, you have open space above, around, left and right, no rocks, no tunnels and nothing below you. Okay, so we're on some sort of, like, truss. Yeah. We're on some sort of track that's... And it's just cavern beneath us. Yep. Fantastic. All right. Cool. That's what I had, that's what I had seen in my mind's eye, but... Because that would be the worst possible scenario. <laughs> but I just figured I'd check, you know? Right. And let us see. So, yeah. Then we get to the spider that's closest to you, Feder, and it's going to head your direction. Okay. Ah, uh, doesn't quite get to melee range with you. And that's its movement and turn. Yusuf, it is your turn. All right. I'm probably going to yell to Taz as I'm running towards her, because I know Fetter's directly above me, and I'm out of range of Taslin. So he's going to go... Let's see. 10, 30. He's going to move to here, and he's going to grab one of the... Um, beads on his necklace and he's going to target himself and Taslin and Fetter and um, he's going to cast Bless and that gives you you bless up to three creatures of your choice within range whenever a target makes an attack roll or a saving throw before the spell ends the target can roll a d4 and add the number rolled to the attack roll or saving throw okay wait hold on say that say that again basically if you if you roll an attack or a saving throw and you come up a little short you can roll a d4 to try and make it happen and add it to okay it's a and it's a continual effect right not just a one-off? Yeah, no, we'll have it for 10 rounds because it's concentration up to a minute. Sweet, bro. And he's going to pull his sword as well. He's going to go ahead and finish his movement uh, back to here so that he's um, at least underneath Fetter, so he's got the protection from the aura on him. Okay. And that's all he can do this round. I'm assuming I can pull this 
pull my sword as a bonus action. Is that right? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Which then brings us to the spider closest to Fetter, and off jumps the relatively larger Duragar than the others. It looks a little bit more important. Mm-hmm. It starts to head your way. Of course, the Duogar would try to stage some kind of an attack on such a shiny mechanical object hurtling through the Underdark. Would be weird if they did it, right? Let's just hope this mechanized conveyance can withstand the attack. Anyway, I think I'm done with the storytelling for today. Let's do this again sometime, yeah? You bring the ale, and I'll bring more tales from these Demon Days. I'm all set up and ready to go. Let me just test my audio here. Uh, testing one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, the waveform looks fine. All right, it looks good. Too close, too close, too close. All right, back up. All right. I'm good. Am I in? Um, oh, go ahead. I am eating ramen noodles that are slowly uh, killing my taste buds and my my mouth because that's the way I roll. Do we, do we need another um, minute? Because we can do that. That's fine. I was just testing. So No, no, no. That's fine. Like, because Tasslin's pretty much just going to sit back and, and investigate the dagger that um, Fetter gave her. But if there's any way that you could, like, focus on them for a little <laughs> bit while my math, mouth returns to normal, <laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> Thanks for telling me that information, that important information, that crucial information, <laughs> the poison for Cusco. I'm, I'm really just, I'm building, <laughs> right? I'm building up so I can um, do a special number two over at Orochan Ramen, beat that like man versus food challenge. Okay. All right. All right. Because I did a number, I did a number one recently, which is like third from the top of the scale and like piece of cake. And so I'm like, okay, now I need to up it. <laughs> I'm rolling right. and speeding. Right. Rolling and speeding, cool. Uh, Drew, are you rolling and speeding? I am. So you will have that ramen noodle bit as a blooper. Sweet, I will use it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Let's clap. It'll be a uh, count us down. Three, two, one, clap. I'm gonna clap, and then I'm going to turn my mic off so you don't hear me sniffling through the pain. <laughs> and yeah. then we'll have that Raven Queen discussion, like uh, you, you talked about. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so three, two, one, and clap. Exceptionally interesting. All right. <laughs> clap. There we go. Now now you have a point for me. Yeah, but they don't match <laughs> the other points. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right, well, thanks a lot. I'm sorry. Editor me is pouting, and now the Raven Queen will talk to you the whole time. <clears throat> Good luck. <laughs> so are we? So are we good? Do we need to clap again? Uh, I think we're good. I can. Okay. I, I've you know we've done it like two times. I can I can figure it out contextually, and then also with with Tony's audio, sometimes I can hear us on her end too. So it does help. Oh, you might not be able to this time, but yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Fuck me over even more. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so. So sorry. No, that's fine. I'm giving you shit. I'm loving that this background, like this noise reduction thing, is actually keeping the kobold from sounding. Oh, amazing. <laughs> like Abby's in the background growling, and it's not showing up on my recording like I'm watching. Perfect. It. Nice. Um, <laughs> wow. I'm going to take a cold shower and eat some cornflakes. Talk to the Lord for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you need Jesus. Oh, I completely fucking forgot that I have a ritual of comprehend languages. I could have been doing oh. that. Oh. It's it's okay. I've got them written down in my journal. You have the dagger. We could do it later. We'll do it live. Oh man, next level I get third level spells. Oh dude, once Taslin reach reaches like uh, I think you were telling me about level 12 or 11. It's like 11 or 12. It's after 10. 
Um, yeah, 12. you become a once she fucking becomes howitzer. she gets twelve, like she's she's just a fucking beast. <laughs> like, and that's not including the tattoos, which have yet yet to activate. 